getting around to drinking my coffee because I had labs drawn at nine o'clock this morning and I had to be fasting for them for 12 hours. So I got that drawn and they drew a ton of vials. And I knew they would because based on my naturopath's orders, there was a really long list of labs that she wanted drawn and a few of the hormone labs I needed to be fasting for. So that's over with. I'm very curious to see what the labs show, but a few of them won't come back for about, she said like 10 or 11 days from now. So I made another appointment with my naturopath in a couple weeks from now so she can go over them with me and come up with a plan based on what they show. Um, I did have an appointment with my naturopath last week. That was my first appointment. I haven't seen her since 2021. Before I started IVF, she has really helped me in the past get a cycle and a normal period before even starting IVF. And then I ultimately still had to do IVF because I still wasn't regular in my periods and I was already turning 35 and I just wanted to get the IVF process going because I felt like that was the right thing for me to do. And given my husband, because he has issues too in the fertility world, we just got the IVF process going. But welcome to today's video. I am so excited to be sharing with you guys how I'm recovering from this loss. For those of you who are new or didn't see my last video, I will link that one down below. It was me telling you guys all about what happened with our seven week miscarriage. We had our frozen embryo transfer on July 26th and that was successful and embryo stuck. And then when I went to my eight week ultrasound, we found out very shockingly that baby had passed away. So I'm definitely still going through the grieving process, but as you guys know, I'm a fighter. I'm gonna fight back from this and and I ultimately want to get myself healthy again physically and mentally right now I'm focusing on physical because that's easier for me and I know they go hand in hand I am focusing on my mental health as well but I'm allowing myself to grieve right now and go through all the feelings that you feel uh, recovering from a loss and so I'm really in the thick of grieving still we only found out that we lost our baby three weeks ago now and I had a DNC so I'm actually still recovering from the DNC I'm still bleeding uh, not a whole lot I would say just spotting at this point but my fertility doctor warned me that I would be bleeding for up to a month and so I think that's probably what's gonna happen with me because I'm already at the end of the third week um, after my DNC and I am still spotting so still definitely going through all of the emotions and feelings that come with loss and I've never gone through a loss before and so navigating this journey for me is been kind of interesting since it's my first time more to come on that I think that'll be a separate video I'll do on the, my grieving process and what that looks like and my experience on all of that but for now this is the first video in a series of videos I'm gonna be doing on how I'm getting myself healthy how I am recovering from loss and so I'll give you so far in this video what I've been doing and so the first major thing is getting back in connection with my naturopath and having her guide me and how to get myself healthy how to balance my hormones again and ultimately I would just love to have a regular cycle I didn't get a period after I had Quinn I never got a period postpartum and even after I weaned off breastfeeding I breastfed him for a year I still didn't get a cycle and so since my fertility clinic knew I wanted to do a frozen embryo transfer they just put me on the birth control pill to prepare my body for the frozen embryo transfer and so I have not felt myself I have not felt back to baseline since before getting pregnant with Quinn which has been over two years now and so I feel like that's another video topic I can get into at a you know a later date for now welcome to the video I'm so sorry this was such a long-winded introduction but a lot to say a lot to tell you guys and I also wanted to thank 
my family, you guys on YouTube for all of the support and love and encouraging comments that you guys gave me. In response to my last video, I mean, such meaningful comments coming from you guys that a lot of them made me cry, a lot of like encouragement and support and just, and a lot of you just telling me your journeys and what you've been through. And so many of you guys have been through harder circumstances than me. A lot of you could relate to what I was going through or what I'm going through right now. And so I just, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you. I'm so appreciative. Yeah, I'm so lucky to have you guys. For those of you who are brand new, welcome to my channel. I upload one video a month. I'm really hoping to do more than one at this point now that Quinn is a year and a half. I have, I feel like I have a little bit extra time. Maybe I can dedicate more to YouTube and uploading two videos a month. <laughs> we'll see, but you can count on me for a video a month. All about fertility, fertility health, IVF, and just I love sharing healthy living tips as well. So yeah, I'm going to sip on my coffee a little bit and do some cleaning since I don't have Quinn today. I never have Quinn on Wednesdays. He's always in daycare on Wednesdays and that's a day I don't work as well. So Wednesday is my only day to myself to get chores done, laundry, cleaning. And so I take it, I try to take it a lot of advantage of that because when Quinn is around, nothing gets done. When he was a baby, I could at least plop him in a bouncer or like put him somewhere and I could get something done. But now that he's a full on toddler, everything I try to clean, he just undoes and he's into everything. So when he's with me, nothing gets done. And so he's at daycare today. And so I'm just gonna take full advantage of him being over there. So I'm gonna take you throughout my day. And then by the end of the day, once I pick up Quinn, I'll probably have to say bye. But uh, in the meantime, please enjoy the video and thank you so much again. So I'm about to take Yuma on a walk and I needed a snack beforehand. So I wanted to share, those of you who've been following a while know about this already, but these are my favorite protein bars. This and the Go Macro Bar because both bars have very clean ingredients. I like this one a touch better than the Go Macro Bars because a little bit less sugar, a little bit higher protein, a little bit lower calorie if you're just looking for a snack, but uh, I love both bars. I do have Go Macro Bars um, in the fridge upstairs. I keep them in the fridge by like, I, I like cold protein bars. I also keep these in the fridge as well, but I decided to go with these just because I just wanted a little bit of a snack, but highly recommend. I love all the flavors. I get these ones at Whole Foods, but you can get them online for a little bit cheaper. I just got mine at Whole Foods because Whole Foods is a half mile up the road, very convenient. So I'm gonna go on a walk with Yuma and I'll catch you in a second. Bye, Yuma. about to do a quick workout before picking Quinn up from daycare. I've already had some lunch, let my food digest, hung out with Yuma on the couch, did some cuddling because I don't snuggle with my dog enough now that I have Quinn. So I try to give him a lot of attention on the days that I don't work and I don't have Quinn, which are Wednesdays, only one day a week. So I'm gonna do a quick 15 minute workout just using dumbbells and little towels for sliders, just like a quick circuit. And honestly, these workouts are what I normally do even if I go to the gym I wanted to go to the gym today but I'm, I'm running out of time even when I go to the gym it's tops 20 25 minutes of a workout because with Quinn in the child care center he only lasts like 45 minutes before he starts getting antsy and since having a baby I just have such limited time that I make my workouts count so even when they're short which they normally are just 15 20 25 minutes max they are intense so I make them count and really that's all you need and so that's another thing I've been able to focus on again is is getting back into my workouts. And now that my energy is returning post DNC, post being pregnant, because when I was pregnant for that short amount of time, I felt awful, very low energy, very nauseous, and I'm just feeling so much better. And so I've really enjoyed getting back into my workouts and I have some fitness goals too in mind. One of them I've shared on my Instagram story is to get my splits back. I used to be a competitive gymnast growing up and I've always had my splits. And then when I got into like my mid twenties, I lost them and then I got them back before I started at IVF and then I lost them again when I got pregnant. So I am gonna get my splits back, working on my handstand still. Love getting back into my workouts. Close your eyes, my darling. Let me sweep you off your feet. There's a home in the meadow, and it's a home you ought to need. This will be our threshold To a home of joy and peace 
This will be the place where our sorrows are released Know the walls are for now a little empty But you've the eye of an artist So let's paint the walls with laughter Until not a spot is made Find your treasures on the shelves with mine And hang your dresses by the mirror I never heard my heart sing the way it is now that you're here This all So, it's actually a few days later. Sorry, I think I might look lopsided, but... Oh well, little man is down for his afternoon nap, so I don't want to wake him up by talking with you guys. So we're downstairs in our downstairs kitchen. Just want to talk with you guys just a little bit while I close out this video. Thank you so much for watching, by the way. Hopefully this video helped those of you out who are going through the same thing or who are still struggling with loss or who are just going through just a hard time in general if life feels really heavy right now. I hope this video maybe gave you some ideas on how to sort of pick yourself back up slowly and maybe get you on your journey to recovery a little bit. You guys just saw that I made dinner the other night and I made salmon. I really love salmon. I mean, I really like all fish, but salmon I really love and especially for its nutrition. Very high in omega-3 fatty acids, so very good for our fertility health and just overall health in general. And I've just been enjoying cooking more, which is so like me. It just feels so good to get back to what I always have loved doing, always have loved cooking way before Quinn ever entered the world, way before I started IVF, way before before I was focusing on fertility, I have always loved cooking and really since the start, I wouldn't say since the start, a few years into our marriage, so in my like mid to late 20s, I started taking up cooking. I just love it. And I used to cook most of our dinners for us, for Josh and I. And so it just feels so good in the last few weeks to be able to cook again. I'm finding that the more I'm focusing on the things that I love doing, the things that make me me, I'm feeling a little bit more whole again. With that said though, this grief journey is really Really a lot. I've never been through loss before. I've never really had to grieve before. So just navigating this journey I've never had to journey before has been challenging. And you know, I think the biggest challenge is like life still goes on, right? I have a toddler, I work, I have properties, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a daughter-in-law. So life doesn't stop even though I'm grieving. And I think that's not a bad thing. Like I think these are all good distractions, but sometimes I just want to be by myself and not have any responsibilities. And I think that's also a normal feeling. But I guess I'll leave you guys with this, is I have also been learning to let myself feel everything. And we're going into week four, which I know that's not a whole lot of time. I, I feel like I haven't had sufficient enough time to grieve. And so I am still going through the grieving process. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get over it, but I don't think you really ever get over it. I think you learn to live with the grief. I think you learn to live with the loss. It just becomes part of you and part of your story. And so I think it's really important to let your physical body cry, let your physical body be angry, let all of those feelings and emotions out, express them and give yourself ample amount of time. Don't put a timeline on it. Give yourself ample amount of time to express those feelings because if you bottle them up in your body, that wreaks havoc on your health later. So you really, I mean, what I've been learning is I really want to get it all out, but <laughs> I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay in this state of sta sadness. I don't want to let this grief take over my whole life. Like I know I need to quote unquote move on and heal. And so that's the point of these videos sharing with you guys how I'm going to do that, how I'm doing that slowly. It's a process. I'm not going to rush it. So I know it's important to feel everything, to express everything, but I also know it's important not to stay in this state, not to let the grief take over my life. And I know it's important to heal and move 
move on in a healthy way, move on. I mean, you know, keep going in life, keep moving forward, even though this loss is always gonna be with me. And I also am learning that the more tragedy, the more challenges, the more darkness someone has to go through, the more light they have in their life to share with others. And so it's kind of like the analogy of the bigger the shadow you're living in, the more light that there is because shadows can't exist without light. So the bigger the shadow, the bigger the light source. And so I, I keep thinking that analogy in my mind as I'm going through all of this and you know, thinking back on my over 10 years of infertility, and then I had to work so hard to get Quinn and then going through oh, the whole process of the frozen embryo transfer is really hard. And then going through loss is really hard. And the more darkness you have to go through, the more light is there for you. And the more light is available at the end of the tunnel and the more light you have to share with others. And so I am really focusing on that, more to come on the mental health aspect of all of this. But yeah, thank you again for all of your guys' kind words of encouragement on my last video and just your support moving forward. It just really, really means so much. It's helping me so much. And I hope that I've helped one of you in some way. Hopefully this video is helping some of you out too. And I just continue to share my journey. So thank you, thank you. Sharing has been very hard lately. And those of you who follow on Instagram probably have noticed that I have not been on my story as much lately. And I'm just always making sure that what I'm sharing is worth kind of reliving the pain because I mean sharing is really helping me move on but it also makes me kind of relive it again telling you guys and then the comments and stuff and so I have to really make sure like it's worth sharing my journey going forward and also that Josh my other half is still okay with it and because it's very it makes me very very vulnerable I'm sharing loss and sharing because it's not only affecting me it affects Josh and it affects my whole family actually because everybody's on social media so they see my videos they see my Instagram posts and and so I have to make sure that like I'm not hurting anybody by sharing and that it's still all positive. So anyways, enough rambling. I will leave you with thank you, thank you. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it because it does really help support my channel. I will see you in the next one. And of course, always remember to be kind to yourself.